Today, we take a look at the business desktop PC, the HP 280 Pro G6. I've just bought this PC from eBay for $150. And it comes with an Intel Core i5-10500, 16 gigabyte of RAM, and a 512 gigabyte SSD. I want to upgrade this PC to play some casual games and use it as a home media PC for watching 4K videos on YouTube and browsing the web. My plan is to install an RTX 3056 gigabyte GPU, but my concern is that the PC's power supply is only 180 watt. To assess whether the overall power consumption is sufficient for daily use with this PC setup, I'll install the RTX 3056 gigabyte GPU and use a watt meter to measure power consumption while the PC is running, both during idle use and gaming. Now let's delve into the experiment. First, let's take a look at what we've got from that $150 for this PC. We have tons of USB 3 ports, and here's the power button, a 3.5 millimeter combo headphone microphone jack, four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports with a five gigabit per second signaling rate, and USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports with a 10 gigabit per second signaling rate. At the back of the PC, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and another 3.5 millimeter microphone jack, an HDMI port, a VGA port, a COM port, two USB 2.0 ports, and a LAN port. There are four full height PCIe slots that are great for installing a GPU card. And at the bottom, we have a 180 watt power supply. I will replace the RAM module with two X8 gigabyte SK Hynix 16 gigabyte DDR4 3200 megahertz to run this PC in dual channel mode and improve gaming performance. Here, I've purchased a brand new MSI RTX 3050 six gigabyte low profile card for $180, but installing it in this 180 watt office PC could be a challenge. Let's explore whether it will work. Now let me remove the hard drive cage to make it easier to access the inside of the PC. To remove the hard drive cage, first slide the optical drive out and then remove the front bezel. Undo a hexagonal screw at the front. And now I can pull out the hard drive cage like this. Now let's see what we have here. We have a Wi-Fi Bluetooth card. Here we have 512 gigabyte SKA Chinex M2 NVMe SSD. There are two RAM slots port up to 2933 MHz with Intel Core i7-10700 or above and 2666 for Intel Core i5-10600 or below. And here we have an Intel Core i5-10500 CPU with six cores, 12 threads, a base clock of 3.1 GHz, and a boost clock of 4.5 GHz, 65 watt TDP, and it installed in this PC. Here we have a PCIe X1 slot, a PCIe by 16 Gen 3 slot, and the last one is a standard PCI slot. We have a rear 92 millimeter case fan installed, and a PC speakers right here. And here's a 180 watt power supply. Now let me remove the RAM module from the PC. A single stick of RAM is not optimal for gaming when the PC is running in single channel mode. I'll replace it with two RAM modules to make the PC run in dual channel mode, which should improve overall performance. Since I bought the eight gigabyte RAM sticks for just $10 each, it still keeps the budget for the PC upgrade reasonable. Now let's install the graphic card. The reason why I chose the MSI RTX 3050 low profile card is that it's so small that I can install it in almost any PC. I can even use it in some small form factor. 
SFF PCs. Additionally, the maximum power consumption of this card is only 70 watts. While the recommended power supply for the RTX 3050 is 300 watts, the combined power consumption of the GPU, CPU, and the entire PC system remains below 150 watts. Specifically, the RTX 3050, 6 gigabytes, 70 watts. Combined with the Intel Core i5-10500, 65 watts, totals 125 watts, leaving us with 55 watts for the rest of the PC components. Now let's install the graphics card into the PC. I installed the GPU card in the PCIe by 16 slot. If I'm lucky, I should hear a click sound, which means the GPU is securely in place. All right, that's it. Now let's reassemble the hard drive cage, the front bezel, and the side panel. Now let's plug the watt meter into the wall. Now I plug the PC power cord into the watt meter, plug the power cord, and plug the HDMI cable to the graphics card. I use the Razer Ripsaw HD capture card along with my tablet to monitor the PC. Now let's power on the PC. Let's take a look at the watt meter to track the PC power draw from the wall. The power draw reaches around 45 watt when the PC boots and 110 watt when the PC starts up. The PC's power draw during idle use ranges from approximately 40 watts to 65 watts. Now let's check the GPU temperature and PC power draw while benchmarking with Firmark. The GPU temperature is around 70 degrees Celsius, with a hotspot temperature of 80 degrees Celsius, while the PC draws 125 watt from the wall. During the CPU stress test, the PC draws 116 watts from the wall. Now let's benchmark the PC for gaming performance and determine the maximum power draw when the PC is running at full load with both the CPU and GPU. Now we're benchmarking Shadow of the Tomb Raider with graphics settings at 1080p, high quality, and medium ray tracing. As you can see from the on-screen graph, the PC achieves around 65 FPS in this game. Adhering to the graphics settings, the GPU temperature hovers around 70 degrees Celsius, drawing 68 watts of power, while the CPU also maintains a temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. However, during full load, the power draw spikes up to 165 watts. The maximum power draw by the PC during full load is 165 watt, which is too close to the 180 watt capacity. However, the power drawn from the wall is not directly equivalent to the PSU's 180 watt capacity due to the PSU's 80 plus efficiency rating. So, what do you think? Should we continue using the PC with this setup, or do we need to upgrade the PSU? For Counter-Strike 2, the PC achieves around 135 FPS with 1080p high graphics settings, while drawing 142 watts from the wall. For the GTA 5, the PC achieves around 175 FPS with 1080p in default graphics setting while the PC draw 152 watt from the wall. Now let's move on to God of War. At 1080p resolution with DLSS quality and high graphics settings, the PC can achieve around 60 FPS. 
The GPU temperature is around 70 degrees Celsius, while the CPU temperature hovers around 80 degrees Celsius. And for the final gameplay test, my favorite game, Resident Evil 4 Remake, runs at around 90 FPS with a 1080p resolution and balanced preset graphics settings, including normal ray tracing, for the conclusion, upgrading a $150 HP 280 Pro with an RTX 3056 gigabyte for $180 is absolutely satisfying for me. The overall price of the whole PC after the upgrade remains below $350, and I can play most games in 1080p at over 60 FPS. Additionally, the GPU and CPU temperatures are acceptable. The RTX 3056 gigabyte uses only 70 watts, and doesn't require extra PCIe power, which is very convenient. If you have an HP pre-built desktop with a 250 watts or 310 watts PSU, it's good to go for the upgrade. However, based on my analysis, installing the RTX 3056 gigabyte on a 180 watt PSU pre-built PC is not advisable due to power draw limitations. While my measurements indicate that the power draw comes close to the PSU's capacity, considering efficiency ratings, it's prudent to upgrade to a higher wattage PSU for system stability and longevity.